Hi, we're here with Beyond the Film Festival. Uh, we're here with David Gregory. Can you tell us what movie are you bringing to the festival? I'm here with Lost Soul, The Doomed Journey of Richard Stanley's Island of Dr. Moreau. Tell us what about the uh, fail Richard Stanley's Islands of Dr. Moreau motivated you to uh, make this movie? Well, it's something that I've always heard rumors about. I've followed Richard's career from the beginning. I was at the world premiere of Hardware when uh, when it uh, played at Shock Around the Clock in 1990. And we were had a lot of... Um, there was a lot of excitement about Richard, about what, what he was going to do next. Uh, he did Dust Devil after that, but then he got uh, the job to do The Island of Dr. Moreau, which was for, for, with a proper budget. Yeah. Um, so it just seemed like, a, 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 seemed like it was going to be something really to look forward to. Because at that point in the horror genre, there wasn't really much exciting going on. You know, censorship around the world had kind of made it bloodless at that point. Mm -hmm. So The Island of Dr. Moreau actually seemed like a perfect idea because it's very perverse, but it's not, you know, overly bloody or anything like that. And it seemed like Richard was, was the man for the job. So when it, uh, when it finally came out, I was living in Los Angeles and I saw the poster in the LA Weekly and said directed by John Frankenheimer. And that was the first I'd heard that Richard was no longer on it. Still said Richard Stanley is one of the screenwriters. And, you know, it, rumors just started coming out about what happened. I think there was an article in Fangoria or in a couple of the fanzines that Richard had been let go and it had all been bad. And then there was rumors about him having snuck back onto the set and things like that. And, you know, it was just one of those things that had, had one of the most interesting production histories for a film that didn't come out particularly successfully. Um, I made The Theatre Bizarre with Richard a couple of years ago. Um, it was an anthology film that he directed one of the episodes for and I produced. And I went to visit him in Montségur, where he lives in the French Pyrenees, and um, asked the question, so what happened on Island of Dr. Moreau? And he started telling me these incredible stories. Incredible stories, as you know, Rich is very articulate, he tells a great story, and uh, I was like, we've just got to start filming this, and this, this, is, this is a documentary in itself. He was clearly really passionate, he was clearly really happy, and it seems like that went against him a little bit? Well, it did, I think, as soon as they, they started casting very expensive stars. Um, all of a sudden, you, can't, you, they, you don't have the luxury to be thinking about their, their, uh, you know, the background and the minutiae and all, all the things that made it something that was going to be interesting in the first place. Once it becomes such an expensive film, it's a matter of getting a film in the can and into yeah. theaters by a certain date. So, um, you know, so, so he, his vision became secondary to the... Uh, to the fact that they needed to put something on the poster with Marlon Brando and Val Kilmer. And, oh, and uh, James Woods uh, for a short well, period. Well, but that was while it was still Richards. That's why yep. it was James Woods, Bruce Willis, and Marlon Brando was the initial. But even then, it might still have been problematic because there's you know, still a lot of expensive stars. It seems like the studio weren't really into it in the first place. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have Mike DeLuca's point of view in, in the documentary because uh, he didn't want to be a part of it. But Bob Shea, who was the head of New Line, he openly admits that he just wasn't really into the project. Yep. So, you know, he doesn't care about all this, all this uh, work that was done over the years by Richard and Graham Humphreys, his concept artist, you know, all this stuff that they were coming up with. You know, it's fascinating to us as, as horror fans or Richard Stanley fans or sci-fi fans or whatever. Uh, but to, to New Line, they were just like, all right, let's just get this done. Money. And when it became an expensive project, it's like, Jesus, now it's a film we don't particularly want to do that's expensive. Yep. You know, so they just needed to get it done. And, uh, and uh, the way that he talks about the, the, meet, the first meeting when he met Stanley, and he says that he almost didn't goof it up, but in the end, he asked for a coffee with uh, six sugars. Is it? I didn't, don't even see that as a goofy thing. It was just right to <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was even three or four sugars. It wasn't even six sugars. Yeah, and, and, and Richard maintains he's never taken more than three sugars in a coffee. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, it's a very strange thing to see as weird, honestly. But, but he does, I mean, it, it, that's it. They just saw Richard as, as an eccentric character, I think. And, and, you know, again, as soon as they, they're entrusting such a huge budget to somebody, they're like, we'd rather just get this old uh, military-esque veteran to just, uh, you know, bring us to the, to the end, you know. As a kid, Island of Dr. Moreau was actually one of my favorite films. I was surprised it was considered one of the worst movies of all time. What do you feel about this? I was disappointed by the movie when I saw it. I, I didn't go and see it in the cinema. I went and I, I rented it on video when it, when it first came out. Uh, but again, I had this high expectation for it because I knew it was going to be a Richard Stanley project. 
Um, so when it wasn't and it was just kind of this mess, um, it was disappointing. I mean, there was stuff in it that made it unique, though. That was, that, was, that was why it was such a curio, because you had stuff with Brando and Nelson De La Rosa, the smallest man in the world, and you had stuff like Brando, and that entrance of Brando is just such a weird, weird scene. And so there are things that, and it turns out that that stuff was all kind of Brando's, either way, where he was messing with the production or he was, uh, or he had like really good ideas. He just didn't really convey them to his director. I don't think he had any respect for, for the director whatsoever. And Val Kilmer too, right? Well, Val Kilmer's just, uh, yeah, it seems like he was in a, a, posi a position at the time where his ego was out of control and, uh, and unfortunately he wasn't going to really listen to anyone or sort of play the game of collaboration. You know, he just had his own ideas of, of, of what the film should be and it seems like he didn't particularly want to be there. I think he just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that he was the important person and it didn't matter what anybody else said. Did making this documentary change your views of the film? Of the, of the, the final, film? yeah. Not really, no. I mean, it did, it, 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 again, it kind of, um, clarified some things, it clarified why Nelson De La Rosa is, is, you know, in the same costumes as Brando and, you know, became the, uh, the inspiration for Mini-Me. Um, but no, it didn't really, it, it, I, it, it actually probably made it a bit worse because it's, you know, you can just see that there's no passion behind the movie that was made and it actually starts out okay the, the when as they're getting to the islands and, and a bit of suspense that they have there and obviously huge production values and the entrance of brando and then it just becomes a mess i mean they you lose track of all the characters and you know the beast people just are not particularly interesting and even the makeups you know they're shown in such bright light that it's that it, they look like costumes to me um, so so no unfortunately I can't say it, it, it improved after doing the documentary and certainly made me annoyed that the the, the original film didn't get made uh, have you seen uh, Richard's uh, recent documentary uh, I have. about the zone yes I have and, uh, what can you tell us about uh, it? I can tell you it's a It, well, I've been I've been to the zone. I've been to to Montsegur where Richard lives, and it's it's a fascinating place, and it's particularly fascinating to be there with Richard and, and Scarlett, his partner, because they know a lot about this area, and it's fascinating and it's mysterious and it's very kind of spiritual and and well otherworldly. I mean, the film's called The Other World, but um, you know, I, I think I've visited there three or four times now, and. Uh, And the documentary is about all these, uh, for want of a better word, characters who live in the zone and they've had experiences and there's all kinds of supernatural happenings and portals to, uh, to other dimensions and things like that, that, that uh, 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 very strange experiences that, uh, that all these people have had, including Richard and Scarlett and, and things that have happened to them while they've been there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's fascinating to see him openly talk about his love of witchcraft and supernatural and uh, how can that have an influence in the movie. He talks about uh, the rituals that he had to do and then the accidents, little weird accidents that would happen. And it's really interesting to see him um, openly talking about it. Well, there's, there's, there's always been a lot of coincidence in, in the world of Richard Stanley since I've known him. A lot of things have sort of happened and he never outright comes out and says it's magic yeah. that's making it happen. But it's, uh, you know, there, certainly even from my experience with him, there, there are things that happen that's like, well, that's just so Richard Stanley, isn't it? That, that, <laughs> it that would happen, happen to now, you. Yeah, yes, exactly. exactly. Um, so yeah, and he, I, he, as he says in, the, in an earlier clip in, in Lost Soul, uh, his mother was into witchcraft, so he was kind of brought up around it in, yep. uh, in, in South Africa and knowing a lot about it. I mean, he's extremely well read on the subject. And, uh, and so he's definitely the man to, to listen to. I mean, it's fascinating to, to hear him talk about that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, it's all the time we have for today. Oh, thank you. And I hope you guys watch the movie. Uh, and thank you very much. Thank David. you. Cheers. Thank you.